Today on Pots and Trials we're having a final look around the garden to see what's looking good in the borders and it's brought to you with the support of Mr Fothergill's Cobra and Dalak. Hello and welcome to Pots and Trials. Now if you were watching last week you might remember that I told you Jill and I were moving house imminently, in fact within the next couple of days. So I just wanted to take this last opportunity to show you the garden. It's, it will be 12 years to the day since we moved here and when we came here there was no garden as such. This was just a, a big grassy area with just three or four quite large trees. So what I thought I would do today is just give you a wander around, show you how we've created the garden in the time we've lived here and give you a few jobs that you can be doing in your garden over the coming week. The very first part of the garden that we created was here, the vegetable plot, and that was because at the time I was writing about growing fruit and veg and Jill was writing about how to cook it, so we needed to get this up and running really, really quickly. It's a very simple design, it's essentially, if you look at it from above, a Celtic cross with four beds, uh, and that's so we can have a rotation system, and we've got the root crop, uh, onions, brassicas and legumes and they rotate on a clockwise direction every year and all we did was to lift the grass where we wanted the beds cultivated the ground composted it and started growing within a matter of a few weeks of being here we left the grass paths but then a few years later we lifted the grass just to make it look a little bit more ornamental and we brick edged it put the gravel down and then around the edge of course we've got soft fruit we've got raspberries we've got asparagus and rhubarb so every bit of this garden is used and we get loads and loads of produce from it. It's all empty of course at the moment waiting to be planted by the new owners and we'll start in our new garden next week. We then started in the main garden which is through here. When it came to setting out the main part of the garden, I don't claim to be a garden designer. I'm a gardener at the end of the day, but I love making gardens. So what I wanted here was to keep it nice and informal. We've got some lovely far reaching views of the North York Moors and up the Vale of Mowbray behind us. So I wanted to encompass those views as part of the garden and not block them out. So we kept it fairly open. I wanted a roughly circular lawn here, which is what we've got. And then it's got paths leading off, obviously one out of the vegetable garden we've got a little path that takes us down there by those big trees and we've got some woodland planting and then the main path that goes through the garden to take us to the bottom section is this pergola and this is a really good way if you've got a structure like this it means you're going to walk through it. it it draws you into it to walk down the garden and one of the rules of course of garden design is you should never stand in one part of the garden and see all of it. You've got to have that element of surprise and even in a little garden you can do that. What we've done is planted it with lots of structural plants, so shrubs and evergreens and trees. So regardless of the time of the year, there's colour and there's interest in it. And one of my favourites at this time of the year is this lovely Pittosporum. This is one called Tom Thumb. The new growth in a few weeks time will be a lovely lime green, but at the moment it's got these really deep purple leaves. It's at its best all the way through the winter. So we've got these structural plants that give us interest all year round. We've got a path that goes goes round here, uh, which takes us, loops us round. We've got a lovely old tree there in the distance. That was there when we came, it's a, a pussy willow. And then that takes us round into the orchard. And then this is then the lower part of the garden. And this is probably my favourite part of the garden. It's a bit of a journey to get here, but that's nice because we can sit and have a cup of tea in the summer house. Well, it's absolutely pouring down here in North Yorkshire and we're going to go live. So we're in the summer house. We hoped it might brighten up a bit, but hey, it might not. It's wet. Horrible and wet. And cute. Hello and welcome to Pots and Trials. We are live in the garden. It's seven o'clock. Hello and welcome to Pots and Trials. 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 Hello and welcome to Pots and Trials and just look at this glorious blue sky and sunshine. When we set this out, which was a year or two after moving in, we'd got Molly by then, she loved being in the garden digging, 
I got some advice from a friend, a garden designer called Lizzie Tulip, and about shapes, and she advised us to have some bold shapes rather than just curves all over the place. So that's why we've got circular beds here. So a small circular bed, the big circular bed with the birchin, and then these borders reflect the shape of the circle. So the idea is again it gives you path so that you can meander around and my favourite border in the whole of the garden, watch that trip by the way Jill when you come down here, is this border here or this bed should I say. This is my play on a woodland. Um, it's got these white birch in there, Betula Jack Montii in here um, and it just makes it feel that you can go in and you're part of a woodland. Now normally we have a bench there that we've removed but we've got this little path and inside it again there are shrubs. Snowdrops have about finished now for the season but we've still got some lovely stem colour there with the dogwoods that will be cut down in a week or two's time and we've got the winter flowering honeysuckle, the hamamelis is finished and we've got the lovely hellebore. So lots of colour but when they've gone then there's ferns, there's hookahs, there's hostas that take their place through the summer. So Whatever time of the year you come down here, this is a lovely place to sit, even on a really cold day with a mug of coffee on there. And then if we just wander around here, before I take you out onto the front, um, we can go into the other side of the orchard. Um, we've deliberately kept the bottom of the garden not planted. It's got this lovely old wall here, and then we've got some views right across into the hills in the distance and I didn't want to block those out and this is a lovely place just to come of an evening and just to lean on this wall and just look out into the distance it really is a nice place Another project that we did several years ago is in this part of the garden which is at the back of the house and when we came here it was just a flat lawn and we wanted to create a lovely cosy seating area so we've created what we call our mini courtyard and we excavated it down to about 18 inches deep to bring it all through on one level. We built the retaining walls and then we paved it and it's created this enclosed area that is a real sun trap for much of the year. Like the rest of the garden we wanted to include some structure so we've got box balls in there, we've got lovely pittosporum and other evergreen shrubs and then these evergreen climbers on the wall so whatever the time of the year you've got some greenery around you but of course in the summer it rarely comes into its own and that's when we bring out the garden furniture of course. We've got my collection of pelagoniums in nice containers, we've got agapanthus in pots and we've got all the herbaceous flowering perennials in the border so it really is a lovely colourful place with lots of scent to sit out of an evening. At the back of me just here we can see we've got the greenhouse, that is the nerve centre of the garden. Uh, I grow all the seeds in there, all the seedlings and the young plants that we put into the garden. So I'm going to really miss that but we will get another greenhouse. So thank you for joining me for this whistle stop tour of the garden. We're going to miss it, we've been here and created it from scratch but part of the move is because Jill and I want a new project and to create another garden. So we will be sharing that with you when we find that project but in the meantime we're still going to be with you every week with lots of hints and tips for the garden so hopefully you'll join us and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bless you. And again.